Hi, I'm Michelle Edwards with Ferro Technologies, and today we're going to learn more about the Vantage Tracker and the Ion Tracker. I'll be your personal tour guide as we talk more in depth about the functionality of the trackers, best practices, and how you're going to be using it in your measurement environment. In this video, we're going to cover the startup checks for the Ferro Ion Tracker. We begin with powering on the tracker itself. Initially, all of the lights will begin to blink and then slowly, the three center lights that you see on the front of the tracker will begin to stabilize. The first light is red. That's the laser indicator light. A solid red light under the laser indicator tells us that the laser is fully warmed up and ready to begin to measure. The middle light tells us that the unit itself has power uh, to it and is ready to begin measuring. And the third light, generally the last light to go stable, is the weather station light. This station, this blue light, will become stable once the tracker reaches thermal stability. The warm-up time for a tracker may vary based on the environment you had your tracker in and the environment that you now open it up and start it up in to complete your measurements. Once your blue light is stable, you're ready to begin your setup within the software. As you go to the software screen, you also get an indication as to whether these lights are stable or not. Once that blue light is stable, the startup checks window will indicate a green check mark next to the warm up dialog box. Once you see that green check mark, you then get an indicator telling you that the tracker is about to be initialized. When we select OK on that indicator, the tracker will begin to spin around on its own and complete the rest of its startup checks. We'll select OK now and the tracker begins to rotate. As it goes through its checks, it will begin to check the IFM laser if it's an IFM enabled tracker. It will also check its motors, its intensity, its encoders, and its ADM system. As each of these checks are completed, they will indicate with a green check mark next to the box uh, to show you that they've completed successfully. Once all the checks are done, we see an indicator on the startup checks window that says startup complete. Green means it was successful. Select OK, and we can move into our next tests. There are two tests that you should do every time you initially set up the laser tracker and before you begin measuring. This will maximize the accuracy that you can get from your ion tracker. The first check will be the self-compensation, and the second will be an angular accuracy check to verify the success of the self-compensation. To begin, we go to the Devices menu and Hardware Configuration. You can also select the P key on the keyboard as the hot key to bring up that dialog box. In the device control panel window, you'll see a button labeled Comp IT. Select that button. And this brings up a new window. And we'll have two choices available to us, self-compensation and angular accuracy checks. We want to begin with self-compensation. Select it with the mouse and look at the prompts on the screen as an indicator of what you're expected to do next. You'll see that the laser tracker will check its initial state and go through a series of measurements, internal measurements to the tracker, in order to check mirrors that are embedded in the front and back of the tracker and determine any adjustments that need to be made during this self-compensation process. Once self-compensation is completed, you'll see an indicator on the screen with a green box that says self-compensation completed. This gives us an indication that it completed successfully. Our next check, angular accuracy check, is going to verify that the accuracy uh, is applicable for our environment 
after the self-compensation that we performed. Select Update to update the parameters from self-compensation. At this point, select Yes to proceed into the Angular Accuracy Checks. Again, this is the verification that the compensation that was applied has resulted in an accuracy that we're comfortable with and that is within the tolerances of the machine. When selected, you're prompted for either user selected or guided points. Guided points means that the software will guide you to specific locations within your environment in order to measure a point. For this, it's usually best to have the tripod available that the puck sits on top of. This tripod is usually found inside the upper lid of the case that your laser tracker comes in. A drawback to using guided points may be that the environment that you're in has an obstacle in the way where it's guiding you to that point. For this reason, we're going to use user selected points. User selected points gives us the advantage of choosing the points on our own within our measurement volume. So I'll select the box that says user selected points and select OK. Once again, we're going to follow the prompts on the screen to make sure we accomplish this check correctly and perform the tasks that the tracker is waiting for. First, it will configure and take some measurements of the SMR in its home location. And when ready, it will prompt us to track to any point within our measurement environment. For the angular accuracy checks, it's recommended at least two points be measured, and you can take as many as you want above two in order to verify that within your environment, you have a stable setup. At this point, it's asking for any point. So we move the SMR off the home nest, and we're going to place it on one of our black pucks somewhere in our measurement environment. Once the tracker senses stability of that location, it will automatically trigger a measurement and then prompt us for an additional point if we choose. Now it asks for any point again, so I'm going to move to another position within our environment. If you lose the beam at this time, just reacquire with the SMR. And it doesn't interrupt the test at all. Set it in the next location, wait for the tracker to sense stability, and then it will measure in that environment. and then prompt us for any point again. At this time, if two points is all we need, we can hit continue to view the results of our angular accuracy check. The green indicator and the word pass tells us that this completed successfully and that our tracker is measuring within the tolerances of the device. We're now ready to close the windows and begin our measurement session.